Hello guys, welcome back to FPL Juice Show. It's another tangent, third one. So we survived the first two with Steve-O and we've got a very special guest here with us today. Now, as you know, Tangent is the show where we talk to members of the FPL community about anything and everything apart from FPL. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you the one and only Ed. Hello. Commonly known as Fantasy Ed, commonly known as Fest Ed. Uh, yeah, and every iteration in between. <laughs> every iteration, yeah. I'm looking for a new uh, X handle that's a bit bit better because it's not fantasy ed; it's underscore fantasy ed, which oh, really yes, annoys true. me. But. <laughs> can we can we somehow murder the actual fantasy ed? Is there? Uh, we, yeah, we, we can, can get to him. Yeah, we'll, we'll we we'll talk about that when it's not recorded. Okay, but yeah, yeah, we can yeah, sort yeah. that out. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Thanks quite... very much for having me. Thanks very much for having me. All good. Pleasure, mate. Pleasure. Mm. Uh, so yeah, we just did the juice show, so we thought we did. let's jump in here and have a, a bit of non FPL chat. So yeah, yeah. appreciate your time. Mm. Mate, where do we start? So wherever you everyone want. knows you. First of all, obviously the guy who's effectively running a lot of things up at uh, Scout, Fantasy Football Scout. Along with of the, the wonderful Sanborn Field, yep. Yeah, you've got a, a great team there, many of which have come on the FPLG show. We've enjoyed good times with them. Yep, yep. So let's maybe start there and then we'll go back in time like a mirage of wavy sure. lines and, and, and look at that. Back sounds that wonderful, let's do it. So... What are you doing now at Scout? So um, uh, that uh, the answer to that requires uh, a little bit of going back already. But so I, I joined Scout uh, in. I sort of did some part time stuff for Scout initially uh, in in a commercial side of things, getting some sort of commercial deals for them and, and bringing in some some partners and things like that. Um, that ended up turning into I took a, a job full time in. Gosh, when was this? March last year, I think twenty twenty three. So not that long ago. Mm -hmm. Then the guy who ran Scout, who lots of you will 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 have met and know, and he's he's on FPL Twitter. Although since he's left Scout, he's kind of stopped doing that. I think, but Jeff, a guy called Jeff Dance, mm -hmm. Canadian fella, lovely guy. He left, and he did. He had run Scout for sort of I think maybe three four years, um, and I took over as as a general manager in a kind of uh, split role with Sam Bonfield. Sam Bonfield had worked there for a while, and she stepped up into 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 sort of running uh, and overseeing things with me. Um, so I became general manager of Scout for the uh, in about June 2023. So I had the kind of preseason, and actually it was a bit before that, but preseason and had this season uh, uh, so far, and and really good fun. You know, great team we've got there uh, of people that you will have you'll know, and and some of them you'll know, some of them you won't work behind the scenes, um, but really good fun. I, I then stepped back from that um, in January, just the start of this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of, it kind of, it became a, a, another a, a part-time gig again uh, in, on the commercial side. So Sam stepped up and taken more of the day-to-day, -day, and I, I just kind of uh, are out there trying to sort of rustle up deals and, and stress certain strategy things and things like that. Yeah. Cool. No worries. And oh, so let's take it way back then. So yeah. everyone, first thing, yeah, people will know you from probably on Twitter is you're a massive Newcastle fan. That's true. However, mm. the accent is most certainly not from Can Newcastle. Can you not text my Geordie <laughs> twang? And this is of the thing people say, like, where's he from? Team North v South. The game week 39 is a constant uh, bone yep. of contention, isn't it? Yeah. So where were you born? Newcastle, right? I was born in Chesmond in Newcastle. Yes. Perfect. And then when did you... My when I was, I think, maybe one, one and a month, 13 months old or something. Ah, okay. My family, um, uh, who are my dad, he's from Newcastle, born and bred. And um, we moved down to Suffolk for my dad's job. So I, li I grew up in uh, a little seaside town called Felixstowe, if, if anyone yeah. knows it. Yeah, very nice place. There's to a port grow there, up. isn't there? There is. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of, this, the town's kind of divided in two. There's like the port end, which is, I think, like the second biggest container port in Europe or something. Mm. Like most of the stuff that comes into this country, I think, comes through there, yeah. or a lot of it. And then there's the kind of other end, um, which is where, you know, most people live and there's golf course and really, really nice sort of place. So it's a really, really nice place to grow up. I was there. I've kind of been all over the place, though, because I was there until I was 13. Mm -hmm. Then uh, my family moved back up to uh, County Durham initially mm -hmm. because my dad took over uh, running a, a school that my granny started. Oh, OK. Um, so it was, a, it was a Christian private school. Mm -hmm. um, that my granny, granny started and when she retired, my dad took over, so we moved back up. Lived in Durham, then lived in Sunderland for a bit. Hoi hoi, enemy, right. <laughs> enemy territory. Um, that was when I was 17, 18, 19. Then I went off to uni in Newcastle. Then I lived in Manchester, then I lived in North Wales. And now I live with my wife in, in just in Cheshire at the bottom of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, amazing. So you've been around a fair bit. Yeah. <coughs> and um, 
obviously interesting. You said about the school. Were you a teacher yourself at one point? I was at one I point. I imagine that. Yeah, my, my, I've got a bit of an eclectic career, really. I, when I left uni, I, um, I started working for a, a Christian charity mm -hmm. that went into schools and did assemblies and chapels and that sort of thing. I did that. I ended up doing, and they ran holidays as well. It was I, I was kind of a public speaker slash salesy sort of role. Mm -hmm. It's good. It really, really um, sort of um, eclectic role with loads of different things going on all the time. So really good fun. I did that for like nine years, eight nine years. Um, I then changed to be a, a teacher mm -hmm. um, uh, at a school in North Wales. Then I went and worked for BMW for a bit, as mm -hmm. I just said to you before yeah, this, because I, really, I know problem. I know you worked for BMW for a bit. And then I took the scout job. Mm -hmm. so so yeah kind of uh, a bit of everything really it's always there's always been a, like a foundation of, of sales and, and commercial sort of stuff yeah um but but not a traditional commercial salesy background yeah yeah no excellent um and obviously you mentioned a couple of times there about the christian groups and it being through your faith is that's is that, i guess is that something that is close to your heart and you're is sort of fundamental to what you do and and, and your life in general <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, um, you know, I've been a I've been a Christian probably since I was like sixteen, seventeen, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and yeah, it's it's um, it's informs how I live. I don't always <laughs> meet the standard I should, you know, that sort of thing. But yeah, it informs the way I live and what, the way I think, and yeah, it informs everything about about uh, myself. I met my wife, who I've been married to for nearly nine years now, uh, at church in Manchester, mm -hmm. and. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I've, I've been a Christian uh, for for a long time. Come from a Christian family, grew up going to church and that sort of thing. But it became sort of a faith that wasn't just, uh, you know, my family habit. believe. Mm. Yeah, or habit, or or just something you do, or just a moral compass, or uh, just my family's faith. It became my own faith when I was sort of sixteen, seventeen, uh, probably. It's really interesting actually because I got like I grew up going to church sort of every every week when I was when I was young. Mm. Um, and it's like interesting. You came, you kind of got more into it at that age because typically all the friends that I went to, you know, Sunday school with growing up, mm. that was kind of the age when you start to drift a little bit because you start going out on a Saturday night, so you're not getting up early on a Sunday morning, or yeah. you start playing football mm. like Sunday morning football mm. and stuff like that, so you're not kind of kind of around as much and. Um, it's interesting you kind of almost did the reverse of that like that's when you really kind of found your faith that's that's really interesting yeah i think so i think i think if you asked me when i was sort of 10 are you a christian i would have said yes but i didn't really know what that meant mm -hmm. um but yeah no you're right i mean 16 17 yeah i i started going along to um a uh, church in in durham uh and there was kind of a big studenty uh, population you know so there was probably like 200 students that went from durham uni mm. so suddenly i was like ah oh, wow this is like not just something that my parents do this isn't just something that old people kind of go to and 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 that sort of thing. not that there was people my age at the churches i went to but but suddenly i was like wow this is quite this is cool and wow i'll listen and 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 you know what was being said it was it was said very clearly and like you know there was no you know, some churches, I think, you know, it's not controversial to say some churches are basically just social groups. They don't really actually mm -hmm. say what they believe. It's just about being good, which is lovely. But yeah, yeah. but anyone can be good and they're not a Christian. You know, it's something different. So this church has said it really clearly. And I was like, you know what? I, I, I believe that. So, yeah. you know, from that point, you know, I've, I've, I've had, had that Christian faith. Doesn't mean it's always easy. You know, my favorite my favorite kind of quote about Christianity is because there's lots of people out there, kind of pious Christians, right, who think they're better than others. And, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. My favorite quote about Christianity is, is you know, a Christian isn't someone who uh, thinks they're good. It's someone who knows they're bad, but has been forgiven. Mm. And I think that, that that leaves no room for piety in, in Christian circles. And in, in many Christian circles, there is piety. You know, everyone almost would have met a kind of holier-than-thou person. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, it, and it's kind of, kind of anti-Christianity, anti really, yeah. uh, if you actually look at it. So, yeah. I think there's a lot of, like, in religion in general, the way that people can read into... The faith and take what they want from it and act yeah, like cherry they're pick better. And, than, yeah, mm. it, it, exactly. So, it's I think it's at the heart of everything is typically treat people how you would like to be treated, and and, and obviously faith is such a personal thing. So mm. it's completely up to the individuals and and how they want to practice it. But I always think, you know, certainly from uh, from a judgment point of view, if you if you're a person maybe that doesn't go for whatever reason, circumstantial or otherwise, maybe if you don't go to church or mosque or synagogue whatever 
every week, but you pr- you practice in your everyday life mm. is fundamentally kind of cementing your faith within you. I think that's can be more important than just showing up every week and mm. you know having a cup of tea and ticking a box. Yeah, yeah, and going it's a home. personal thing. I think I think the thing that I subscribe to and I think is important is that you know. F- Faith can be something that's just that, that you you believe in yourself and you kind of conjure up in your, in your own heart and mind. Um, but but I think if you are a Christian or if you're from another religion, this probably applies as well. You know, we don't define what the faith is, the, mm-hmm. the belief is that God does. And therefore, as a Christian, uh, you know, you're either all in or you're all out. Mm. So, um, you know, there's obviously different interpretations of things, but you're right. There's a lot of people who would cherry pick stuff and say oh yeah but that bit i don't agree with that bit but Mm. i'll take all this you know Mm. i'll take the you know the golden rule of you know Mm. but i don't actually believe that i don't think you know i don't know that you shouldn't get drunk or uh, have sex before marriage all those sorts of traditional rules they'll say oh i don't believe that but i'll take the kind of good part and i think i think that's just uh, an inconsistent view now does that mean I'm perfect and I've kept all those rules all the time? Absolutely not, you know. But mm. fortunately, Christianity is a um, a religion of forgiveness. Mm. Thank God, yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because like I got, the the one I went to was a, a Methodist yep. church growing up, and that was very much like um, one of their things that differentiates them between maybe the Church of England or um, Catholicism is that you don't they don't drink yeah because it was all about it was it was traditionally i think the tangent of the working class um i can't remember charles wesley or charles wesley that's it who founded it and it was the reason why they founded that church because it was typically the working men and the families would see the working men would squander a lot of their money and ruin Mm. themselves drinking Mm. and it would have such an effect on the families and the wider community mm. that one of his key things was like drink less but every time there was like a church barbecue in the summer everyone would be drinking do you know what i yeah, mean yeah. and and so i always kind of found it like what is are we meant to do this are we not and mm. it was like there's so many little inconsistencies between but then you, yeah. that's where you get those different sects of each kind of absolutely yeah type of church i guess yeah um one thing i want to talk to you about there's always mm. a bit of um I think there's quite widely misconceptions of you on <laughs> X. Yeah. Um, which is obviously the app that typically we'll all use, formerly mm. Twitter, that we'll all use to for that FPL community, if yeah, you like. Yeah. Um, and obviously you've been a key central part of that with the stuff you've done with Fest, which we'll, we'll come on to shortly mm. as well. But I think there's almost this kind of um, reverse, and at least I'm fully aware, me talking to you, it'd probably be like, look at these two Tory boys mm. chatting, right? Mm. But my political, trust me, I, I, I think they're all useless. Yeah. I've got no, no That's my political view as well, yeah. yeah. So, but there's almost this kind of reverse snobbery with you mm. that people, I think, see you as this sort of posh character yeah. on Twitter. Like, how close to that is the truth were you kind of like privileged going out or obviously i know newcastle's working class very much so working class area and you know all of that but is there an element that or is it just kind of like do you lean into that character on x i lean into it yeah because i got fed up but when i first joined it was just like tory boy and all this sort of nonsense so yeah. i sort of lent into it a bit to just just kind of annoy people really yeah. to be honest but <laughs> Look, no, it's not that. It's not that. It's not really that true. I know I've got a, a sort of well-spoken accent, and that's the thing that that you know. It's amazing how judgmental people are, by the way, on, on accents. Mm. They're the ones claiming they're not the judgmental ones, and they'll judge me straight away. Yeah. It happens yeah. quite a lot. I think it happens less now, but when I first arrived, I think it didn't help as well that I kind of arrived on the scene and then immediately set up a fantasy football fest, yeah, yeah, charging yeah. people tickets, and we had this VIP ticket scandal that maybe we'll talk about later. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll but um, no, look, I'm not. I'm not really traditionally that posh. I know people scoff at those, but I, I went to private school. Yeah, um, but it was you know it wasn't a top top private school. It was yeah. sort of most of my peers at the school I went to that my dad ran uh, was sort of, uh, you know, you know, probably from kind of working class backgrounds who'd done well and 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 the parents had kind of saved the money and, and sent them to that school. So it wasn't super super posh. I went to uh, uh, the one in Ipswich I went to before I, we moved up north it was probably a, a little bit a little bit posher, but but it wasn't it wasn't super posh. I, my thing is if I think if people hear me, listen to me, and think I'm posh, 
it's probably because they've never actually met a properly posh person. Yeah, yeah. And that's not an insult, but <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. true. Like when you meet these <laughs> these people who've been to your Eaton's, your Harry's, your, you know, the, these proper sorts of old schools, money, sort proper of old money yeah. and properly like um, just another world, yeah. just another world, A, that they live in another kind of you talk to them and you think crikey like you 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 were just your mind is just completely different and i'm, I'm not like that at all yeah, so yeah. so uh i know people might might scoff at that because oh he went to private school he is posh well yeah, yeah i get that element but i'm yeah. not that uber There's posh levels, that people so. have yeah that yeah. people have kind of thought I, i'm at i'm not at that yeah. at all well I, I certainly never found you you know a, a not posh as in that but like certainly no sort of grandeur or anything like that you very down to it you know every well, time think so, yeah. we've yeah. met at fest or kind of you've come on the show you you know the same as like and, and again on the show the my character is kind of the posh yeah. one ash mm. is the yeah the road man if you like and yeah, that's yeah. kind of like the and we lean into those characters and yeah. we always say it like i'm not as posh as i pretend to be on the thing yeah ash isn't as yeah <laughs> like of course shabby yeah, yeah. as he pretends to be yeah we just kind of it just creates a bit of fun and yeah it's just good fun and, and x is just in that total joke most of the time isn't it so why not yeah, have a bit of fun exactly i mean half time is people that aren't even who they're pretending to be yeah, <laughs> you yeah. don't even know what they look like it, because it's... Yeah, i know exactly yeah, they're, they're, they're profile pictures of a duck or something yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. or a parrot <laughs> yeah um, yes. i think the um the thing that did annoy me slightly and it takes a lot to annoy me like i'm a pretty relaxed guy i don't get wound up i i'm not one of these people who like quits Twitter or something or you know when you know it gets an up whatever I don't yeah. I really don't care but one thing that I, I remember getting a bit like oh, this is mad is when I first joined and people were calling me a Tory and you know some quite big accounts called me you know Tory mm. it annoyed me because what they meant was it wasn't it wasn't like oh you know you've just got a posh accent what they were trying to convey in their mind and what they th think Tory means is like cold unfeeling doesn't care about others all the all these connotations yeah. with it and they were just completely judging me never met me yeah, yeah. and just throwing that at me and didn't know my political opinions at all by the way completely assumed them so you know i didn't really engage with it too much but who were the real judgmental ones there you know let the people decide. Yeah. Uh, I would suggest it wasn't me. No, it no, was no. them. Exactly. And you, you do find that a lot. Like you imagine the reverse. If you were to meet someone with, let's say, uh, an, a, for want of a better word, a common sounding accent, mm. right? You meet someone like that. Steve-O hates those guys. Yes, yeah, <laughs> Steve-O Steve hates the working class, <laughs> as we know. Mm. But if you if you met someone with that um, accent and straight away like, Oh, this chav, this, mm. da, 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 you mm. know, I bet he hasn't got a job. I bet this. Mm. If you made the same assumptions but mirrored it yeah. to the to the opposite end of the spectrum, it would be like disgusting behaviour. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But it's complete inconsistency. <clears throat> it's yeah. almost. But I guess it's that kind of people feel like they're punching up. Yes, exactly. And it's 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 victim versus oppressor. Yeah, but it's ultimately wrong because you're not punching up. You're probably punching sideways. <laughs> yeah. Probably, yeah. Um, um, yeah. But yeah, a lot of a, a lot of people are quick to judge on X, as we know. And you I mean, take a lot of it with a pinch of salt. And then, oh, totally. But yeah. then you meet face to face, right? Because it's probably some of these people, you know, you're saying big accounts, obviously, mm. um, you know. But then you've probably met them face to face at Fest or at, mm. you know Game Week 39, mm. uh, the charity match or or whatever it might be. And it's always lovely. And then what? Ninety nine yeah. percent of it is is just like, oh, I've actually met him now. He's a sound guy, or yeah. you know, whatever. So it's just. But then you're yeah. expected straight away to forget about. <laughs> yeah. All the shit, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what totally, I mean? Yeah. Because you can't. Like, why are you just as? Oh, that's fine then. Don't worry. Yeah. Oh, because you think I'm all right now. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So, thanks for your approval. Yeah. yeah. I was really couldn't sleep. Yeah. Thinking yeah, yeah. <laughs> FPL one two eight seven six yeah. uh, didn't like me. Yeah. Exactly. I know. Aka parrot. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> but um. Yeah, no, it's interesting. I just, I just had always wondered what your thought were behind that because I do see, um, see, and I know you sort of play up to it as well, and I and I like that because I thought we do that kind of stuff on the show. Mm. And I liked it, you know, when people were like doing warm ups and you were doing it in your brogues or whatever, like mm. doing keepy uppies in your front. I thought yeah. I like this. That was just genuine as well, but but yeah. but, but you know <laughs> what I mean, yeah. But I, but but yeah i did uh, people did cling on to that a little bit look i think look ultimately it's just it's just people are, it's it's x isn't it you know people yeah. people say stuff they don't mean really so it doesn't really bother me at all it doesn't really happen anymore actually uh, no, but, but, no. but, it, but it doesn't i think enough really. people probably met you now yeah I, i'd like to think so yeah i mean obviously to... fest has been great fpl meets yeah mm. i went to my first fpl meets the, course, the other day yeah, yeah. which was great um but yeah 
you know, it's like 99% of arguments on Twitter would probably be solved if the people actually met. And they go, oh, actually, you'll sound... They wouldn't uh, even start. Yeah. No, exactly. Because no so, one's saying that stuff. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. People are bored. <laughs> um, so, yeah, awesome. Obviously, we touched on Fest. Yep. So, I say you're instrumental uh, with Janet. Was it just the two of you to start with, wasn't it? Alongside well, Scout, it, obviously, with the background. No, well, it was me. Um, oh, okay. I didn't know Gianni, and I didn't know Mark Southerns, who's the other guy who's involved. I just put out a tweet saying... I joined the FPL community in lockdown. You know, everyone in lockdown had extra time suddenly. And, mm-hmm. and you know, what what do you do? I joined Twitter and initially got involved in like the Champman FPL game and, yeah, and the yeah. community. And I think that was my initial kind of involvement. And then it kind of morphed into being part of the FPL community. I only had, I don't know, 200 followers or something. But I just tweeted, I just assumed there'd be a meetup mm. for this community. And I tweeted something like, I'd love to go to the meetup. Or whatever, and there was the people who was like, "Well, there isn't one." Yeah. So then I put out a tweet saying, "Look, I've got a bit of a background in events. You know, the old um, uh, Christian charity job used to run events in the summer and stuff. And and why isn't there one? This would be great. I'll do it." And that tweet kind of gained traction, and you know, my biggest tweet I'd ever done at that point. You know, got a hundred retweets or something, but and all the big names in the community, like Let's Talk Andy, and, mm. and you know, all of them. You know, Focal Harry, I can't remember what the focus around there, but whatever. They all retweeted it, so clearly there was something there. So I had an idea. And I had all these DMs flooding in from all sorts saying, I'd love to be involved. I want to be involved. I want to be involved. Um, the, the, the one that stood out was immediately Mark Southerns. Because mm-hmm. I, I, and even at that point, you know, I'd only just kind of got involved, but I knew his kind of history and pedigree of, yeah. of kind of being a, a, a central pillar to, to FBR and, and the way it is now is, is largely, largely uh, what he's done. And obviously he started Fantasy Football Scout mm-hmm. uh, initially. Uh, he's not involved anymore, but. Oh, unofficially is, but you know, not officially. And then uh, I thought we wanted a third. I spoke to, I spoke to Mark. He was kind of in, and I said, uh, you know, I've got this Janny guy who's DM me, and he wants to get involved. So I called Janny, my first f- first phone call with him, and then he got he got on board, and then we just went for it. And um, you know, the, the error we made that pissed people off more was suddenly it wasn't a, a you know a free event. And whenever, as you I'm sure you know, whenever there's money involved in the FPL community uh, on X, suddenly people, I don't know what it is like they could just not come and not pay it but mm. they have feel like they have to comment they feel like i don't know whether it's jealousy i don't know whether it's just like uh, i don't know what would motivate someone to see an event and think i mean we were charging 20 quid i think for the first one 20 quid and then we did this vip ticket 50 pound thing that people really rallied against now i kind of get some of the criticism that came with that but why don't you just not get it then like no one's forcing you the to do options it. I, there the yeah. options there get it if you want i don't understand why you know suddenly there was all this hatred particularly for mark a lot of people directed at mark and he kind of was like whoa and they kind of stepped back a bit from from fest because 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 of that but yeah we got rid of the vip ticket straight away because it clearly didn't go down very well um even though every exhibition <laughs> and conference kind of has a vip uh, different tiers it's quite a normal thing yeah it just didn't go down well and anyway yeah no uh, f- you know uh, after that kind of settled down and, and you know i think we sold 180 190 maybe 200 tickets for the first one um yeah so re- really really successful it's not a you know it's not a profit making thing for no. us uh, it doesn't make us uh, you know for the stuff that juice do you know it's this these things oh, cost cost a lot of money famously lose money <laughs> yeah yeah i mean we we hopefully this this um the one this summer you know on the, on the start of the season get your tickets fest ff-fest.com um hopefully this one will will uh be the first one that probably makes a bit of money mm. um that we'll just put back into the event it does, and this is the thing and we we've done stuff with our events you know we've tried mm. to do things we've had the yeah the um, christmas one i remember you, you the christmas one we tried to do yeah and we literally were covering the, the the ticket, and to be honest with you, the only reason we were doing the tickets is because we wanted it to be, if people pay, mm. there's that bit of commitment that they're going to turn up. Yeah, absolutely. And that's all it was. Because what we were saying... It's event was, 101, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. exactly. And we, yeah. we were like, pay the money, but then you're going to get food and drink mm. and like music and everything. It's all yeah. going to be laid on for you. Yeah. So it's not actually, that, like you say, everything that's coming in is going mm. back on the event yeah. and more um but yeah people are just funny when it comes to that sort of stuff sometimes um obviously we've done the five aside tournament since and that seems to have gained a bit of traction it was great um but it's just frustrating when you think and i think people always think and i had this when i was talking to steve on, on on one mm. is that when we try to do like this giveaway of car mm. let's get our members league up and there were so many people that just wanted like you say not not just not join in mm. they were like well, you can't do this because of this rule and i've looked into it it becomes like a cash league and it's like mate just don't bother like mm. this isn't your fight this mm. isn't your problem 
you don't need to get involved. If it's not for you, it's not for you. That's yeah. cool. But people, I think, always looking for a catch. Yeah. But we've given away, you know, PlayStation 5s, mm. Nintendo Switches, mm. um, countless football shirts, mm. game, copies of FIFA, all this sort of stuff. Yeah, how dare you? Like, do you know what I mean? It's We've ridiculous. never made I can't money. believe so you're doing that. The, the, the history what? You're there. giving away a car? You twat. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. And it's like, yeah. they must be making, what's the catch? I was like, there's no catch. Mm. But the amount, honestly, the amount of people that like, got into yeah, this I for that. Yeah, I don't know. I think, I think funny. ultimately, like, there's just going to be those people out there all the time and they're just not going to be the ones that you're ever really going to properly, you know, engage with because, mm. because they, I think, I think critical thinking is something that's sorely lacking in, in, in general uh, kind of life uh, uh, it seems with lots of stuff going on like critical thinking just being able to go do you know what um you know i think there's a catch or i don't like that or whatever and just but, but just going that's all right I'll just, yeah, yeah. Just look over here not you know? trying to slag everyone off who does <laughs> yeah. fancy bring everyone down yeah it's, oh, that's mad um, it's a funny old community isn't it the fpl community it's uh i guess every so. every sort of twitter community will have its it have its sort of yeah. things but but it is a it is an odd one. It's, sometimes it's brilliant. You know, it's so good. Like the highs yeah. of it is great when something funny happens or, you know, things like, I don't know what jumps to mind, like, you know, FBL Black Box doing the match of the day thing and, and, yeah. and it's been disastrous and they haven't seen and everyone kind of gets in on it and, you know, things like that. F FBL Parrot being <laughs> exposed oh, yeah. about, you know. Um, but at, at, its, at its lows <clears throat> as well, when people are arguing and blocking and, you know, that sort of thing is, 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 is not great. I mean, like I, I've never blocked anyone. On Twitter, no, I, I, Ash I, I, sometimes blocks people from my account. <laughs> but I'm very much like people. People wear that as a badge of honor. I really think. If I, <laughs> I think in today's society, this is a big point. But you know, cancelling out and blocking out voices that are wrong or you think are wrong is not the way to go. Mm. You need to allow them so that they can be stifled by debate. Yeah. Um, and the problem is we're getting in these echo chambers. I mean, I'm just not saying a you know, controversial point. Lots of people think this. We're getting in these echo chambers where you only listen to people that agree with you. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when you hear an opposing view, you, you know, yeah, yeah. go to call the police. It's like absolutely yeah. mad. We need to live in a world where these ideas are allowed to um, sort of, uh, you know, be 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 said. Um, and and they will get quashed by 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 debate. If they're, yeah. if they're bad ideas, they'll get quashed. That's that's always the thing, isn't it? You can fight bad speech with good speech. That's yeah. the that's the theory. Whereas I would rather I mean, just from a petty point of view, I'd rather not block people mm. and mute them just mm. so they're shouting at themselves. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? And they don't even know that right. you can't yeah, see yeah, them. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. just they're just in a little, you know, room yeah. arguing amongst themselves that's, uh, on their that's own. Good. but that's what that's what i quite like you know <laughs> i know this is controversial as well but i quite like elon musk the way he's run twitter mm. you know um i i immediately signed up to this is another thing that people didn't like me for i immediately got tick. a blue tick as soon as it was available i thought brilliant there's you can do longer videos and i was posting these videos at the time so that was brilliant uh there was other other things that were kind of promised to, to be coming um Everyone jumped on it. You, you bought a blue tick. You know, you Tory twat. All this, yeah, 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 you're yeah. rich brat. You know, whatever. And now a lot of those accounts that said that have got the blue tick. Yeah. Why? Because it makes sense, and actually, it's worth the money. And actually, you get your money back if you've got like over like I don't know, thousand, two thousand followers. You can just it pays for itself because the, the, the replies you get get you about you know say eleven dollars a month, and it costs eleven dollars a month or whatever. It costs eight dollars, whatever. So. So that's another thing. But I, I, I don't mind Elon Musk at all. I think, you know, I don't know why he went from being, he went from being like a real hero. Yeah. Champion of the people. Time, yeah. people, pe person of the year. And then suddenly, due to just what? Because he's centre right, basically. I mean, yeah. f and really annoys when people say, oh, far right people as well. Right, Show some yeah. respect to actual, the far, <laughs> like the far right murder millions of people like in history. Look back at that. Don't call flipping Suella Braverman far right. Yeah. She's not far right. Yeah. Uh, don't be, it's an ignorant position to call her far right. She's right and she's not correct. She's yeah, yeah. right wing. Yeah. She's not far right. And that always annoys me as well because it's, it's kind of a, such a, uh, yeah, a lacking of understanding of, of, of history, I think. Someone's going to come back on that and say, oh yeah, but this is how it started in Nazi Germany and all that. I'm not getting into that, but I'm just, yeah, that's just a- Wait until Suella Braverman launches her- <laughs> Exactly, oh yeah. Her new but, party. Uh, I, by the way, I do not, you know, I do not really like Suella Braverman just for clarity because I know people go, oh, Ed likes yeah, headline, Ed likes- You better well. clarify that before you get in I trouble. I know, Cruella, Cruella Braverman. <laughs> um, but yeah. no, I quite like, uh, yeah, I quite like Elon Musk. 
Well, I think definitely like the community notes things. I think it's fantastic. Community notes is brilliant. Um, like being able to uh, post, uh, like uh, do your videos live, like you guys do, Scout does now on yes. Twitter. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, longer videos longer videos brilliant um allowing more people to say bad ideas and not cancel them that's a positive whether you like the ideas even if you think they're awful it still should be allowed to be said because that's how they're shot down Mm. and that's how society shoots down bad ideas that's how the greeks did it you know you'd be in the parthenon or whatever and you'd be debating bad idea would come up debate would happen it's quashed you know that's how it happens i think the thing as well if you you can almost become if someone gets cancelled or banned from uh, being able to talk, they almost gain a not- notoriety that then turns them into this kind of legend. That yeah. and and then where there's nothing coming out, people look back with rose tinted glasses and embellish how clever they were at making points. Hmm. If you let them just talk and talk and talk, they'll make themselves <laughs> look stupid. Yeah, if the volume just wait, will just go down and down and down on them. Yeah, yeah. you just wait and let them say they can keep yeah. going, keep going. Like all these GB news. Mm. anchors or talk tv mm. all of those sort of people mm. that are on those shows just let mm. let them do it. and then what happens gb it goes bankrupt you know not enough people are pay you know people just get bored it's a bit mm. fun the only people times people watch most of the time is just mm. out of like car crash tv they want to yeah. see people embarrass themselves there's but, another one i don't mind too much i don't agree with everything he says but piers morgan i think it's all right like i don't know why he's so controversial yeah, it's, it's think, Chase of Meghan Markle. He's been gone a bit far in that, but yeah, yeah. like, and I wouldn't agree with some of the stuff he said there. I think it was kind of on the line and over the line. Um, doesn't mean you should cancel it, but I don't didn't agree with it. But most of the stuff, he's pretty like when you watch his, he's obviously digital only now, isn't he? Because Talk TV has gone bust or something. Yeah. But like when you watch him do these debates with two sides of an argument, he's pretty good at what he does. Mm. Like you can say he's not. I know he's got the history, checkered history as well of being editor of the and the phone, hacking, the phone and stuff. hacking stuff. So yeah, yeah, obviously he's probably like a horrible guy. Like I'm not saying that. Yeah. But he's not like people. Sometimes people talk about Piers Morgan as if he's like Adolf Hitler or Stalin. Like he's not that bad. He's no, just a bit. He's a pantomime villain. He's just a pantomime villain. Mm. Yeah. And and a lot of his stuff's actually quite cool, quite good. Like yeah. A lot of it's awful, but a lot of it's good. That's it. I mean, you see them. There's it because him and um, Jeremy Clarkson had a punch up, didn't they? And it was they like, did, yeah. if there was ever a fight that you think, I don't <laughs> care who, I hope they both lose. That was it. Yeah, I think Clarkson punched uh, Piers yeah. Morgan, didn't he? Um, but it's, um, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. We're getting into the stage of life now where we're kind of being a bit too sensitive to some of these people and then we're losing sight of what. The, the actual bad people are doing because we're so we're so centered on these media uh personalities that are kind of and also when pierce morgan's had like someone who is properly on the right you Mm. know like a or he's he's called to question like andrew tate or Mm. alex jones and people like Mm. that he's he's gone at them you know from he does it the same to both sides. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So he will, he will be a bit like that. But uh, yeah, he's he's definitely a bit of a knob. But that's yeah, just... yeah, he's probably uh, all these people. <laughs> like this is the thing we don't know. I've no idea. Never yeah. met him. He's probably a bit of a bit of a knob, like you say. Mm. But most of his journalism, I think, probably 80 percent of it's probably quite quite good journalism. Yeah, there's a reason that you know so many people tune in. Yeah. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes oh. when he does something that is is a bit controversial, like it might not be like his person. He knows what he's doing. Of course, he's getting viewers every time. Ronaldo scores a goal or Messi, he's on Ronaldo yeah. saying, yeah. best player ever. Because he, yeah. knows the, he knows the attraction he's going to get from that. Yeah, of course. Um, so chatting about Fest, obviously we had mm. it at the, because obviously we've been to a couple of them. Mm-hmm. Annoyingly, I've missed the last two and I'm going to miss this year's start of the season. It's been noted. I'm away. I'm it's always away. Noted. And James gets the hump as well because we're going to do like first show of the season. I'm always cool. yeah. away. Um, but it's just school holidays. That's time. Yeah. It's <laughs> it right, yeah. been a time. I understand. Like don't worry. Um, but uh, yeah, obviously we had it at uh, under, under Waterloo. Waterloo Station Arches. Yeah. The um, Arches, which as you, as you said, obviously had some, because this is the thing as, as well. Obviously people were, having a bit of a go last time about the Wi-Fi issues and there was the big... Oh, was I mean, that went down mm. in history. FPL folklore. It was... Um, it? Yeah, it was... Uh, just a bit of background on that as well. It was a bit of a disaster. Last event, although it was the biggest one and, and loads of people had a great time, you know, it seems. Uh, it For me, it was the worst one by a mile. It was mm. just a stressful evening. Um, number of reasons. One, 
in the past, like the Wi-Fi, if you've been to, I mean, the one you went to, yep. you know, if you've been to the previous ones, that Wi-Fi is incredible. There's yeah, like 200, 300 absolutely. people and it's lightning fast. Yeah. You know, people streaming the game and all sorts, like multiple, multiple people, like tens and tens of people streaming the game. And it's never been a problem. So we could always say, yeah, it's underground and then it's basically essentially a dungeon. I mean, it's quite a vibe yeah, dungeon, it's but it's cool. Yeah. 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 Um, but, you know, don't worry, there's, there's Wi-Fi. Now, on the day, we get there and the Wi-Fi's down. You know, and, you know, we obviously arrived a few hours early and he's saying it's going to be sorted, it's going to be sorted, it's going to be sorted. And it just wouldn't get sorted. And in the end, it turned out that it was like a, a fault in one of the, like, you know, on the street down the, the road, main, like the yeah. main sort of thingy that had to be fixed. But the thing that kind of doubly uh, made it really stressful was we had, you know, if, if anyone who went uh, remembers, uh, a company called Zuju who were sponsoring it. They were launching a game. Uh, and yeah. if, like a fantasy game yeah, it wasn't yeah, a betting yeah. one it's like a free one but like a game and and the, the their whole kind of pitch and the 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 events on the night and and, and the the sort of the way they were kind of pr promoing it that had been agreed relied on wi-fi mm. and i just thought that's a safe bet because we've done four events there now and it's always been perfect like yeah. i just thought why would i not you know I don't, you don't need a contingency i've looked back and think what fine. could i have done wrong but in the end it just could not have predicted this at all yeah but what it led to most people to be fair everyone was very good natured about it they were just you know teasing me and stuff but the thing that happened of course was that arsenal team news got leaked mm. and i can't remember which way it round gabriel, gabriel Saliba, was dropped gabriel was dropped and 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 everyone you know had gabriel and then it it sort of you needed the Wi-Fi or whatever to be able to make that switch. Now I actually managed it on my phone with data. This is why I always tell people I, yeah. I managed the switch so you could have. But a lot of people went outside to do it and stuff. But yeah, yeah it was just a bit of a, a bit of a really stressful evening because you know when those sponsors pulled out, that was going to be the first event that actually kind of uh, went above breaking even and actually mm. made a bit of money uh, to put back into the into the company or claw some back that we'd spent before. And when those sponsors pulled out, uh, you know done you know yeah. it was it was not going to uh we were not going to uh, uh get that money so so yeah no it was it was a bit gutting but th that was kind of the final uh nail in the coffin for that venue it was a very cool venue as you've been um but if you remember the first time another thing that happened in the first time we, we announced was we said there'd be live sky and live bt because mm -hmm. the venue said they had it and then we'd sold like 100 tickets and they came and said oh we've got rid of that i was like are you, mm. are you joking yeah so we didn't have the game uh, and they never could show the game and that was always a bit of an issue. The kind of counter to it was like, well, a lot of people said, I don't mind the game not being on, I'm chatting, I'm having fun. And there were those people, but there were some people like, it's an FPL event, first day of the season, you don't have the game, which mm. I got as well. So we weren't like, for the last couple of years, we've been looking for the right venue. It's just, if you've ever looked for a venue for that many people in London on a Friday night with Sky and the right size and everything in prime location, the money is is just, sometimes your quote is just yeah. astronomical. So, we were looking and looking and looking. There was just never anywhere that we could basically just afford to to put the deposit down to do. You know, some of the deposits you quoted twenty thirty k. You just yeah. slap it down to just 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 to book the date. Yeah. So, so yeah. Eventually, we found this this new place, which is really great. Uh, beer, uh, Vauxhall Beer and Food Garden. I went and met the guy. I went and had a look around. If you've ever been, uh, quite a few people have actually been before. Mm -hmm. It's right next to Vauxhall train station, and it's got the game. It's gonna have the game on. Uh, kind of pray for good weather, um, but there is kind of spaces you can shelter if it does rain. And yeah, we're hoping to have loads of cool stuff going on. Like Kelly Summers, hopefully, is gonna is gonna uh, uh, come down again. She's she's presented some of the other ones. Cool. She, she that's not confirmed. Uh, you know, she needs to check her diary and stuff. But but hopefully that's gonna happen. Lloyd Griffith is hopefully gonna come again. Oh yeah, comedian. He did a stand up yeah, set yeah. last time. I really enjoyed. it. I know a lot of people did. I thought it was really really good last time. So he's gonna come. Uh, we might be, we're trying to get FPL Jim, you know, from the FPL community, the comedian fella, to yeah, come no, as well yeah, and do yeah. a little set. He should be, um, I think he's coming in to us in a few weeks' time. So brilliant, yeah. yeah. And then you. and then hoping for like some games and competitions and prizes and you know just the normal thing. But mainly you just go to have a have a drink and, and have some FPL content like a live podcast or whatever that we'll yeah. do. Not with me, don't worry, some some experts. <laughs> so so yeah, no, it should be it should be good fun. It's just an excuse to get together, really. Well, that's the main thing. I think obviously, yes, it's nice to have the games on. Yes, it's nice if the Wi Fi works, but mm. actually, this is like the time to be like when people come up. I what I love most about it when I've been <clears throat> is the interaction when someone comes up to you and they're like, Yeah, I'm FPL Chandler, and you're like, Oh <laughs> mate, yeah, how you yeah, doing? Yeah. Da, 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 like and then you get into it because obviously you go, oh, you look like that. Yeah, yeah, like some people have like different avatars or mm. uh, things like that. So it's nice when you get to see these people put a, put a face to the name and, yeah. and, and, and kind of it makes your overall experience within FPL community, certainly on X, a lot more enjoyable because you're like, yeah, I remember that guy. Yeah, like, yeah, it is good. I remember in before the first or was it the second fest? 
Oh, it was kind of the era of FPL spaces. You know, there was like six months where everyone was doing spaces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A year yeah. or something when it first came out or whatever. And uh, I was running quite a few spaces, um, just which was just absolute carnage, chaos. But um, I was doing a lot of them with Ash, FPL Hints. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah. And um, done loads of spaces with him and, and like kind of really kind of got on with him on X and everything. And then I was at Fest, the second one, I think. And this person taps me on the shoulder and says, like, I'd like to make a complaint. And I was like, oh happened like it could be anything at that point like covid was kind of still around yeah, or this yeah. that and the other. i was just thinking what have i done what's gone wrong and then he, it was ash and he, i obviously didn't know what he looked like but oh. he was like oh no it's ash it's ash. <laughs> and so that was quite funny he wasn't really complaining of course but yeah no that that just illustrates you know yeah, there's these people that we kind of know but but don't know yeah, yeah and this is the chance to put kind of two puzzle pieces together really yeah no it's cool um obviously you mentioned about the when you said about the sponsor of yeah. the last event you said oh not a betting one and I think the elephant in the in the room is always, mm. um, you know, with with a lot of people on the FPL community and chatting and stuff, is betting sponsors, yeah. gambling sponsors. And obviously, yeah. I know Hub and yourselves have had things in the past where sponsors have been announced, and then mm. it's like, oh, actually, I don't mm. know if we can work because the backlash has been so big. Like we've always said on on our show, we don't sort of have any. We 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 don't have gambling sponsors, but then. I can understand because the thing is, football's flooded with them, mm. right? And obviously, we've had we've chatted about this bef before as well. Mm. Like football's flooded with gambling sponsors, so yeah. yes, a lot of people use uh, FPL as a way to kind of have a little bit of experience of playing that game without actually costing them money or the threat of them losing money if they've got addiction or got a problem with yeah. with gambling, and we get that. Um, but by the same token, if you want to gamble, it's all around you. Do you know what I mean? Like, and it's hard. It's a really hard because I get that people have real, real problems with it. Mm. Um, but I guess it's like, like with anything, like drinking. Um, one of my good friends is a um, uh, a gambling addict. He's lost everything. Like literally over his lifetime, he's lost everything. He's ended up living in a hostel. He's like, he's gone out for a night and lost thirty thousand pounds in a car, like playing poker above a kebab shop. Do you know what I mean? That sort of stuff. Just yeah. mind blowing like mm. addiction to um gambling. We did a, a a podcast with him probably three three years ago and he kind of like went into some of the stuff he's done. It's just it's it's just mad. So there are people like that have real, real issues. Yep. But it feels like until how much how much onus do you think is on, it's the longest question ever, isn't it? How much onus do you think is on FPL companies, because there's only a few, let's be honest, to deal with this gambling problem when Premier League is quite happy to be in bed with all gambling sponsors? Do you think it should be treated any differently because it's a game or do you feel like it's part of football? Yeah, I mean, with FPL, there's a slight nuance, isn't there? Because obviously, you've only got to be over 13 to play mm -hmm. uh, with your parents' permission, I think, or something to some sort of thing. Um, and the whole thing, you know, the reason that under 18s are allowed to play is because the prizes aren't cash. They are, well, you know, what are the prizes? Like tickets to a game or stress like a stress ball, yeah. <laughs> like you could get, win FPL, yeah, like the most hardest thing in the world to do, and you win a stress ball, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's because it's... Very much not. I didn't not know that's the reason there's gambling. no cash prize. That's interesting. Well, I, sorry, I just assume that's the case. Yeah, it must no, be. probably right. Probably is, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, and you remember, you know, the, the FPL did bring in a paid version. Do you remember? Like, a yeah, FPL Pro Ultimate, Ultimate, yeah, I think that it was, was called. It. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that obviously didn't work well for whatever reason. But look, I, I think, you know, ultimately FPL companies, and I'll, I'll, I'll stay broad here. I know I've involved a scout, but I'll stay broad. FPL companies are, are held by the same rules that all other companies and football companies mm -hmm. um, have. So if they want to show uh, gambling ads, uh, then they can. Uh, if they don't want to, they don't have to. Um, so it's not a question of legality. It's a question of morality or uh, supposed morality, I suppose, however you want to see it. So what do I think? Do I think, you know, FPL companies should get stick for having gambling ads? Yeah, they can I get a stick if they, if they want. But do I think that... Let's take Scout, right? Because that's, mm -hmm. that's the thing, you know, I was involved in and, and Scout had some gambling ads up uh, and, and has had gambling ads up in the past. 
the issue is if you've got uh, you know, if you need to get make some money in terms of ads and, and, and utilize you know, ad space on your site or, or you want to, you, you know, you need to get a commercial deal to pay the wages of the people who, who work for the company. And, you know, Scout have got, you know, 10 or so full time employees and like 20, 30, 40 subcontractors. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot of people that, that the wages are relying on it. They need to maximize their commercial revenues. And if you've ever worked in anything like this, you will very quickly realize that the people who offer the money are the gambling companies. Now, my, my, I suppose my... <sighs> To get to the nub, I think that's a problem with society in, in at large. And if they wanted to ban it, then ban it. But mm -hmm. if you haven't banned it and 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 it's it's it, everyone else is kind of almost doing it and, and the money's there and that's how you're gonna make the most money to pay the wages to keep going, then then I mean there we go. I mean, I, look, for example, at Scout, there's a there's a toggle if you if you sign in, which is a free free thing, free account, sign in, and you can click a toggle and it removes all the gambling ads. Um See, then you're giving people the choice, which I do think is the way for. Because if you know you're of a disposition where you could be tempted, then you can do that straight away. I suppose the thing that people come back on is, you know, if you, a lot of people don't sign in to Scout. Loads of people do, obviously, you've got the memberships. But if you just go on the site to look at it mm. and you fantasy football Scout, Google it, and but it's you can, there. You can be a member without paying, can't you? Yeah, yeah, you can. You can but you've got to make the membership. Yeah. But I suppose if you're that against the gambling, then the onus is on you to just sign up quickly for a free account and then take a toggle it off. Yeah, you know, or it again, it's yeah. Okay. so, but I, I do understand, look, I understand people have, have, uh, you know, big issues with it. I very much understand that. And, um, but I just don't, you know, some of the, some of the, some of the comments and the stick, I, I, you know, that the, the people have given, uh, not just Scout, but other, other comp, you know, other FPL involvements with, with, with gambling companies and stuff. You just think, well, you look at their profile and you find out they're, I don't know, a West Ham fan and you've got Betway on the front of your shirt and mm. all around the ground that kids are out all the time and like, I don't hear you shouting much about that. Maybe they are, maybe they are, I don't know. But yeah, but it, I, th I think there's definitely an issue there at society at large needs to needs to solve and I think it's starting to happen, isn't it? There's new Premier League rules, isn't there, that you can't be front of shirt sponsor from 20... Okay. Six twenty-seven or something, that. Yeah, yeah. but that only covers the shirt sponsor and not the advertising hoardings. It seems like a bit yeah. of a halfway house. Yeah. There's so much money in it. All Maybe the gambling they're... companies will be lobbying the Premier League and all this jazz. So, this yeah, is the problem, tricky. isn't it? Every, everything that so <laughs> they're going to want clubs to sign the better players and the ones yeah. the only companies. If the only companies that are paying that money mm. is are the fans going to be happy to say, "Well, we're going to make a stand. We're not going to have mm. a betting sponsor." Mm. But then, by the way, we're not going to be able to make that big summer signing you wanted. It's going to be yeah. people will choose the lesser evil, I guess. Yeah, have totally. to decide which way they go. Yeah. Um, but no, it's interesting because um, it's always a debate that does crop up. You know, we've seen quite high profile. Um, I think was it FPL mate. You know, got a. I can't remember if it was with Scout or Hub. Got like some sort of. He's never been with Scout, so... So maybe it was Hub. Um, this could be completely wrong, <laughs> but I'm sure... Allegedly. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure alleged. I'm sure that he got announced to do something with someone and then someone exposed things. Oh, like this back in the day, this was video and then it got cancelled. And... Oh, well, I know mate, FPL mate, Dan, uh, who, again, when you meet in person, it's a lovely bloke. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, yeah. Been on the show a few times, nice guy. Oh, yeah, great, yeah. Um, well... I know he had he he had a previous YouTube channel that got, keeps getting dragged up every now and again, um, that he did when he was you know early twenties or teens or something that that, that some people uh, didn't like and that mm. gets dragged up. But I can't remember this this specific thing you're talking about with the gambling company. But yeah, but yeah no, it, whenever it comes up, it's it's a, there's always certain sort of uh, uh, you know warriors out there who who turn up and and sort of and and you know fair play like if you if that's what you if that's what you think and that's what you believe mm. you can't really say it's a bad sort of cause can you it's not it's not no, there's no ill motives all, like yeah saying, absolutely so I, I absolutely understand it there's no kind of complaint really uh from my end but don't complain to us complain to the people who premier league who make the rules yeah. at a wider level because we're not just gonna you know as i said we've got wages to pay at scout like every company has and we need to make ends meet and you know it is you know i have the commercial oversight of scout really and the stuff the opportunities come into my inbox and i negotiate it so you know totally my fault you know to expose yeah. myself as being the person who did all this but it comes into my inbox you 99 percent are, are from gambling companies and we turn down loads mm. if it's too aggressive yeah. if it's if they want us to do stuff that i think you know that's not just an ad that that's just too much you know then we don't do it 
Um, but the things that are just put a banner on your site, write an article about this free to play game that but it happens to be on a gambling site. We do we do that sort of sort of softer stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, and obviously the other big player, I guess, in the full FPL sort of content website market is uh, FPL uh, Hub, of course. Is there a friendly kind of rivalry between you guys? Is it like all sort of friendly? Yeah, yeah, stuff? it's friendly. Oh, yeah, no, I know Will who together. runs uh, Hub, and uh, obviously, you know, let's talk. Andy was at Scout for many years, and he's at Hub now. Mm -hmm. And mates at Harlan, I know him. Raptors at Harlan, I know him. Uh, and then Focal Harry, Gianni, Black Box, The Wire, are, are, are with us and others. Uh, yeah, no, it's totally you know it's friendly. It's it's an industry that's that's big enough to, to kind of have both. Mm -hmm. um, there's obviously fantasy football fix as well. It's slightly different. They're less of a kind of do less media sort of YouTube. -y. They yeah. do do YouTube, but they're less like putting stuff out there. Like we do like two podcasts every single day and that sort of thing. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, no, totally friendly, totally friendly. Yeah. Good. Good. Mm. It's time to get some juice there. No, sorry. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> is there anything? No, not really. I mean. Pfft. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> um, so no, it's awesome. So yeah, looking forward to the new uh, fest, obviously, which will be end of end of summer before the season starts. Sixteenth of August, yeah, Friday night, um, Vauxhall, as I said, really really good opportunity. Uh, loads of kind of the the faces of the FPL community will be there again. Some obviously can't make it. Quite a lot of the YouTubers like need to do their deadline stream and therefore don't come, which is fine. Um, yeah. But but some come down to London or do do their stream and then head over. Like Focal, yeah. well, I saw does Focal that. was doing a live stream from the venue he did it from the venue once a couple of ones that ago, shows yeah. how good the, the wi-fi was yeah, right? yeah this is why i trusted it they exactly. literally live streamed yeah, yeah. um but like you know i know i think fpl harry's already got his ticket i think focal's got his ticket i think mate's got his ticket so um yeah no really nice really nice to, to kind of meet everyone cool uh and obviously you've been involved in game week 39 oh, i have yeah so... i'm still involved yeah <laughs> no no my footballing days are so behind me but i'll do my best um i've got knackered knees i'm overweight <laughs> and i just kind of come out every every year to play this that's everyone play at, 20 that's minutes everyone, isn't it? it is so, so, where well, you can certainly you, everyone in my uh, you can era. kind of tell the people who play regularly because they're suddenly running rings in, in, around you in the 80th minute but yeah. no no i'm looking like i need to uh, i need to start a bit of a you know a running plan and stuff i've got, I've got such dodgy knees now i used to play football a lot but i just you know when you play now and you think my feet aren't doing what I'm telling them to do. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, I used to be able to just absolutely nail this and now I just can't. So, But I do my best <laughs> and I'm more of a sort of uh, jester slash mascot for Team North. Really. Yeah, I just yeah. G them <laughs> up and, and have a good time on the night out and stuff. But It's a great rivalry. It's good fun. It's good fun. Yeah, it's a good event. And, uh, you know, hats off to Benny and and Ash and uh, I think Iceman as well is, is helping us here. I think here. he's doing a bit more he yeah, is, than he yeah. was previously. Yeah. Um, so so hats off to them and I think I think there should be uh some news coming about the next event. Perfect. Pretty soon, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um that's speculation, but I think think that I think that's yeah. gonna happen. No, I'm sure they'll start start announcing it. Um before we came on mm. and I said, What interesting stuff have you got? And you said, Well we could talk about how I was once set on fire. Well, I just thought what's interesting <laughs> to talk about about me and I thought, well I was once set on fire. I think people who follow me on X have probably seen this, but yeah, I was set on fire. I've got you, you know, do I've like a, a reminder scars yeah i do yeah. a reminder each year mainly just for likes and retweets and sympathy yeah. sympathy <laughs> followers clout. Clout. Yeah, yeah it's all for the cloud yeah um but yeah no i've all the skin on my arms from my elbow basically to a kind of my fingers is from my leg so skin graft mm. apart from the palms and stuff but yeah no i was at a barbecue and um i'm trying to light it and someone i was talking to through like meths on it or paraffin or something i think it was meths and it kind of rebounded set my face on fire which set my shirt on fire and uh and then i couldn't get my shirt off you know when you, you know i ripped my shirt yeah you know when it's stuck on your arms and you're like Ugh, like that yeah, so i was yeah. on fire doing that so that's why my arms got it the worst um and then yeah so then i got i got uh, uh put out with ginger beer <laughs> and i always remember that and um i remember thinking of being on the floor and thinking is it was that a a serious thing or was that like a, i'm just gonna get up and it'll be fine yeah, yeah, yeah and then as i was looking at the floor i could see the skin from my face hanging down oh so I was like, oh, yeah. crap, I'm going to look like Lord Voldemort. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I was on the, f uh, first of all, you know, a paramedic came who then said, oh, he's going to need an ambulance. The ambulance came and then they said he's going to need a helicopter. <laughs> so a helicopter came uh, and 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 um, airlifted me to, fortunately, like one of the best burns units in the world, actually, at Wiston, which is mm -hmm. near Liverpool. 
So I was in North Wales at the time, so it's like 40 minutes. But I got to have, uh, uh, I think, ketamine or something, which was absolutely oh, flipping right. quality, mate. <laughs> Honestly, it was like, oh, it's just so relaxed on it. I'm <laughs> having this helicopter ride. Is this an ride. advert for ketamine? Yeah, <laughs> like, helicopter ride, no pain anymore. Just like, and I was just telling jokes and like, like yeah, so good. Um, actually, it harks back to someone on the stream earlier commented saying, it's married, but he doesn't wear his ring. Well, I had a ring, but it got cut off in the hospital to get like them like a machine yeah. so it's all mangled now and i then ordered this one and then it was too big so it's gone on those fingers oh, right. <laughs> but yeah no and then i was in hospital for uh just under a month i think uh, 15 percent of my skin came off oh. and skin grafts on my arms they said to me when i got there they were like right you know it's the first day you know you're, you're in you've got your morphine and everything and uh, we'll know the skin's dead and the, you know if it goes white mm. you know, if it goes white it's dead and you'll need to have a skin graft and then woke up was it the next day or the day after or something and at this point i couldn't see because my eyes were swollen i couldn't hear really everything was swollen it's just mm. like i looked like a fijian rugby player with like <laughs> i had like a head thing or like all bandages and um and then i woke up i think it was maybe the next morning or the day after and just white all oh. the skin was white so had to have surgery where they basically got like a kitchen you know like a kitchen metal scour mm. obviously i was under but i just scrubbed the skin just completely, off, yeah, 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 and then replace it with skin from my leg, which is really clever. They take like a sort of um, piece of skin, like from my leg, like you know, that big, yeah, put it in a lattice, stretch it out, and la and kind of lattice it, and then put it on your arms, and uh, and it. yeah, but that, that that time in hospital was the illest I've ever felt as well, so it was obviously very painful. But what was happening was every day I had to have the bandages replaced, mm. so you know, you take it off and it'd be peeling, you know, really painful when I was on gas and air like pregnant women, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is great as well. Uh, but the thing with gas and air is if you stop at any point, it immediately becomes redundant and yeah. like, you lose, the, so you've got to keep going and then you get into uh, some quality. But um, what was happening was it, when, when they were taking the bandages off, um, you know, bacteria from the air while, while it was exposed, because there was no skin basically, you know, it was just yeah. straight into my system, was getting on then being wrapped back up and my temperature was just soaring. So, yeah, so and they couldn't get it down. Yeah. 41.8 degrees or something stupid, like yeah. shaking, but also boiling hot, but also freezing cold, but also just everything. And just like, oh my goodness, I'm dying. And that, would, that was happening sort of every day for a, for a couple of weeks, uh, for like two, three hours after the bandages. Yeah. And at first they didn't know what was going on. They were like, how we can't get his temperature down. He's had paracetamol, the consultants were being called and everything because the temperature was really properly going high. Um, I felt just awful. Like, I just can't explain how awful that feels. Um, and eventually, I was the one who said to them, I was like, yeah, it's, it's, there's a pattern here. <laughs> you know, it's it's every time you change the bandages and this bacteria is getting in, surely. Um, so maybe I should have been a doctor in life because yeah. I'm smarter than those guys. <laughs> You'd think they think we I must think, have done yeah, this before. I, I know, maybe... Although maybe I just completely hallucinated that happening because I was just completely <laughs> delirious. You heard a voice saying that. Yeah. It might have, in your head, it was you. But one of the, one of the things out that, yeah, exactly. One of the things out the back of it was I had to eat 6,000 calories a day for like three months. 6,000 a day? To replace all the skin and stuff. So, oh, mate. And I had to wear pressure garments for a year on my arms. Um, right. But, you know, you think, oh, great, I can eat whatever I want, 6,000 calories a day. It's really unpleasant trying to do that really horrible. Well, you'd be forcing yourself probably yeah, the first horrible. three thousand are quite easy enough just awful but, but the, way, the like... way they do it is you know they give you these shakes that were like just like you know like an oh, sort of things. Sort of but yeah, yeah. but in that was like 800 calories so it was like the most disgusting thing it was just yeah. like just pure like gloop yeah gloop it's kind of like <laughs> dark matter you know, absolutely crazy like the, the the kind of density of it and um yeah so but but then off the back of that like I put on quite a lot of weight, obviously because going from then six thousand to then trying to eat normally again was quite hard. Mm. And then ever since then, like I used to be really, really slim, like all the way through my twenties, and you know into being thirty, thirty, probably thirty. When did this happen? Was I twenty nine? Thirty? I can't remember. Whatever. Uh, and then since then, I've, I've, I've just not been kind of as active as stuff. Like my knees go and everything, just getting old. So I'd love to get like a period of time where I really. You know, the guys who play for Team North know that on one of the uh, friendlies that we played, I was just starting to get kind of mo properly mobile again and everything off after everything. And then in the first like three minutes of the game, you know, Michael Owen against Sweden in the World Cup, where his knee... Oh, he just turns. He kind of... So he just innocuous pass. His like... It? Well, his, his studs kind of gets caught and then he kind of falls really funny and you think, what's happened? And then he realises his knee's completely just gone. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. mine wasn't quite that, but it was kind of similar. The way I fell was kind of like... My, my studs got caught in this 3G turf. My body went that way, my knee went that way, and I felt the M, 
MCL, whatever it is, yeah. medial cruciate ligament. I felt it ping, like oh. literally like a piece of string going. Tick. And I still feel it now when, I, when I'm in bed. I can still feel if it's not quite positioned right, I have to kind of move it and stuff. So I can run again now, but kind of in, you know, it's just, it's just, I can still feel it. Fortunately, Ben Dinnery was at the sidelines. He's obviously like a, oh, an injury yeah, expert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he immediately told me what it was. And I, although I kind of knew I could feel it, but, but yeah, no, I'd like to kind of start getting uh, a bit more mobile again. So yeah, that's a random tangent, but there you go. No, it's interesting. It's name of the game. Yeah, exactly. Interesting to, to hear. Cause yeah, I can't imagine anything worse than that feeling. And like you said, it's interesting saying that, that shock of not knowing because your body just goes into shock. I'm assuming like, think yeah. oh my god am i all right it was just that moment yeah where i was like i've just been on i think yeah it was kind of like i think i've just been on fire for like 10 12 seconds uh, and just you're processing everything and then then yeah is that is that i, I just had no idea how, how bad it was my shirt what was left of my shirt was like i remember on the floor like a little patch this big everything else had burnt up yeah um and yeah it's just a really really odd feeling my hair was like singed and stuff uh, my ears were a proper mess. Um, yeah, but I mean, I was really, well, I was fortunate. The, the most fortunate thing was I didn't need surgery on my face because yeah. uh, then I would have, you know, big scars on my face. Um, so even though that's where the fire started, it like set my face on fire, uh, it was my arms that got, got the worst of it. Yeah, because I guess, yeah, because you would have, obviously your friends and fam, they would have gone into like absolute panic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my wife struggles more with fire now than I do. Like I, I, I'm oh. not, I don't... Because she saw it. She saw me on fire. Yeah. yeah. I obviously don't have that image. I just, yeah, yeah, I just yeah. heard kind of, <laughs> and then like, you know, <laughs> stopping breathing, obviously, which, 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 um, they nearly put me in an induced coma because obviously if the flames go down your throat, mm. which they did a little bit because I completely lost my voice and I was burnt because you breathe in, right? <laughs> and yeah, then flames, yeah. uh, fortunately I didn't do it very much. I managed to kind of just, the instinct just made me stop breathing but uh, obviously swells up and if he swells up you you, you, you know you you're not gonna be able to breathe so when i got to hospital they were debating whether to put me in an induced coma um and put like a tube down my throat and you know all that sort of stuff mm. uh but i kind of <laughs> reasoned i was like arguing with them like no 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 it's fine if i'm fine fine because i don't know why but i was and i and, and i was in the end but i couldn't kind of i couldn't talk for a couple of days i couldn't really see for a couple of days and i couldn't really hear for a couple of days um but yeah, no, I mean, happy days. The best thing about it was I was off work for the whole summer yeah. and I had this little TV. So I was just in, basically in bed all day watching uh, the TV. And it was the summer of the, uh, I watched, you know, England's one day World Cup cricket, oh, yes. super over. I yeah, watched yeah, that yeah. from from in from bed because all my arms were bandaged completely apart from literally the tip of my index finger. So I had enough, you know, I could go like that and on my phone kind of do that. Yeah. Um, but also that summer, like what, what I'm quite interested in, uh, like one of my sort of things I'm fascinated by is like the Apollo missions, American Apollo missions. Oh, yeah. And it was 50 years anniversary. So yeah, it was 2019, it must've been. So it's 50 year anniversary. So there's all these documentaries about the moon landings, which I flipping loved. So <laughs> I, I did all that. The thing that I couldn't believe was it was like 28 quid for every three days to have the TV. What? You had to pay 28 you quid. charged you? Yeah. It was a private room. Yeah. Which just happened to luckily get like this wasn't a private hospital or anything. Uh, but then yeah, twenty eight quid you had to you had to uh, pay. So people were saying like, oh, can I get you anything like fla flowers? Or I was like, don't get me flowers, just ping me twenty eight quid so I can yeah, get the next yeah. three days of TV. Um, but yeah, no, it was uh, it was it was good. The, the mad thing was, you know, you had to, you know, after like three four days and after the surgery or whatever, when you you bandaged up and. Uh, they'd take the bandages off and then say, like every other day, they'd say, you know, have a shower because you've got to keep clean, obviously, which is a flipping ordeal. But the shower was flipping stuck on boiling hot. Oh. <laughs> I was like, can then we not make, this is, doesn't make any sense. Can we not make this cooler? I've got the, no skin. Yeah. I wouldn't even set on fire. So that was so painful having, having, having. Uh, it's like a torture. Yeah. It's just, I just think, is this some sort of test? Like what the heck's going on? Um, but yeah, hey, hey. But uh, yeah, no, my, my my wife doesn't really struggle too much, but she did for a bit uh, around fire. And she's always amazed that I'm not, you know, not bothered. You know, I'm not like scared of fire. Or I have any traumatic sort of yeah, yeah, flashbacks yeah. or anything. But that's because, like, as you said, she saw it. I didn't. Yeah. And to see that would be quite like a blame an oh, because Yeah, you always, I guess it's that thing, isn't it, of any of your loved ones, you'd always rather it happen to yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. than... 
Anything oh, I'm absolutely happy happened to me. My wife would have been a flipping nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, and I've said that to my wife before, and she's like, "Yeah, I would have." So it's, it's good. <laughs> like I'm very much a, um, yeah, way happier it happens to me than others. Yeah, don't know what what that is. I, I guess that's. I think probably most people think that, but yeah, yeah, it would have been way. I would have found it way worse if it was my wife trying to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, no, glad it happened to me, because then you know what you're dealing with, and you know you can deal with it. Yeah. Right. Ra- rather than you know other people having to deal with it. So yeah. Yeah. No, it's horrific, but obviously, the way you dealt with it speaks volumes to how. We'll put some pictures. You know. I'll send them. To, can we edit them in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure James can. There James you go. Can sort those out because have a look at these. I know you do a kind of almost like safety reminder. Don't you? When it gets to kind of when it's barbecue season, of sort of end of May, I always say when people start saying, I put the pictures and say, just be safe at barbecues. And I do. I, I mean, basically do it because it gets loads of retweets. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you just like this. That's <laughs> you traumatic. Hear it. You hear it? I'll follow you. Yeah, I'll come to fest. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but no, but also genuinely, you know, it was so easy. I mean, this was an old barbecue. It was like a, 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 a used to work. I hate to lean into this even more, but I worked at a boarding school for a bit mm. and uh, had this. Um, the, the, their barbecue was like from 1940 or something, mm. 50, 60, I don't know. But it was basically just a sheet of metal. There yeah, was no yeah, one of those. It was yeah. and you chuck the coal on and just start it on the metal. Yeah. So there was no like safety anything, um, which is why it kind of kind of happened. Um, so yeah, be careful, barbecues people, because it can go wrong, and it goes wrong like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From being perfectly normal to going wrong is just a split second. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. And the per- obviously the person who was the one who caused the accident, yeah. obviously without if it's not something you want to talk about. No, well. no, no, no. But I'd, uh, what was their kind of did? Uh, were they able to kind of forgive themselves and and kind of was that? Did that change that relationship or was it kind of... I um, forgave him straight away. Mm-hmm. As I was on the floor, first thing I was saying is he was like, just swearing. I was like, it's all right, don't worry, don't worry. It was a mistake. It was a bit of a stupid mistake. I've made worse mistakes in my life. Mm. I absolutely 100% forgave him straight away. I don't really see him very much anymore, but that's not because of that. That's just because he's moved away. And yeah. I, didn't, I didn't really kind of know him too well, really. Right. I mean, I knew him. Um, and you know, uh, him and my wife worked at the same place for a bit, so I, I kind of knew him. But uh, but yeah, no, I forgave him straight away. It's not you know, it wasn't his fault. It was yeah. it was something that I would have done. And uh, you know, I think uh, being a Christian as well, having that fundamental understanding that I'm you know I'm a sinner. I've made so many mistakes, but God has forgiven me. Mm. You know, in the Lord's Prayer, very famously, it says, uh, "Forgive us our trespasses." F- forgive us our trespasses, mm. of we forgive those who trespass against us. That is those who sin against us. So you, you know. If we want to have God's forgiveness, how on earth can I say, God, you're going to forgive me. You've got to forgive me, but I'm not going to forgive this guy. Mm-hmm. You know, how, you know. So yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely forgave him straight away. It's interesting because I know um, it's a friend of a friend. Yeah. <laughs> Every good story starts like that. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I know, I know the friend who was at a party and one of these guys popped a champagne cork and it went what right in this girl's eye right and yeah. basically she couldn't i don't know how she's doing now but i know i remember at the time she couldn't see at all so she was struck couldn't drive all this sort of stuff he yeah. was dropping her to work right anyway he did this for about a month and then it turned out she was going to sue him she wanted to sue him for mm. causing this thing and it was like obviously a complete freak accident yeah. so it's like but she wants she wants some sort of well, that was an option for us. You know, we could have we could have done that. I could have done that. Yeah. And I ch- said, no, no, I'm not going to do that. And I think sometimes people can get in people's ears sometimes. And if they've 100%. not got a certain character, mm. you know. And, and to be fair to this guy, it was obviously a stupid thing to do. I think he was going for his mate, trying to hit him in the back of the head. Yeah. And, you know, he's missed and it's hit this girl. Yeah, I think that, um, yeah, I think that, you know, we had the option to do that. And and because there was multiple errors made by him, he went into a, a room he shouldn't have. He took a substance that wasn't meant for that. Mm-hmm. Threw it on a fire, you know, yada yada yada. Uh, so yeah, it was it was silly, silly mistake. But he did not mean it, yeah. and uh, you know, I did, didn't want to, didn't want to, didn't want to him. And I, I think as well, ultimately, what is that going to change the situation? Yeah, no, 
No. Is it just going to make it more stressful for everyone involved? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Who's going to make any money? Yeah. Just the lawyers. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, yeah, it's it's it must have been a really traumatic time, but. It was, yeah, I mean, it sounds all worse than it was, to be honest. <laughs> My wife always says, no, it was awful. And it was, I think she found it, you know, really hard. Mm. For me, once I realised, right, I'm not going to lose my sight. I can see again after, like, day two. Mm. I can hear, I can speak, no surgery on my face. Fine. I was just like, yeah, sick. Yeah. Just in bed now. It hurts a bit. Well, a lot. But, you know, other than that, it was it was just very much, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I've always been, anyone who knows me knows, I'm pretty positive and upbeat. And uh, kind of, you know, to, to to a fault sometimes make things that are big prob should be big problems. I make them small. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's fine. It it will kind of uh, it will it will be fine. So I, I, but with that, it genuinely was just like yeah, it's uh, it's fine. Good. No, well glad you're still here to tell the tale. Mate. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Be careful with your barbecues, everyone. Um, and yeah. uh, so what's what's next? You know, in life in general. Life in general. Um, what's next? Yeah, I don't know. I think just yeah, plodding on with with sort of scout stuff, trying to just offer value where I can in, in that, and 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 sort of uh, you know my involvement in in FPL is that and fest and some of the little bits I do. Just 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 I don't know. Just kind of trying to trying to make them as as as, as good as I can. I've got another sort of gig I'm doing in 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 London in a salesy sort of role as well. Um, so just balancing all this, all this stuff, yeah. and 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 uh, yeah, me and my wife have moved around quite a few times over the last few years. So, kind of settling uh, a little bit more, uh, getting stuck into a, a kind of new church uh, on the Wirral where we live. Uh, we've kind of haven't really properly got stuck in there yet. So it'd be good to good to get to know people a bit better. And yeah, just moving on. Like me and my wife, you know, would love to, uh, you know, start a family ourselves, which we've 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 tried. Um, so, so I guess, you know, for us, we've been married like nearly nine years now. I'm 34. She's 34 as well. And, you know, starting a family would be good. Cool. And if you could change one thing about the FPL community, what would it be? Interesting. Well, it'd probably be something around what we talked about at the start, which is, you know, people just being far too judgmental and things like that. I think, I think, I think I'd love to switch the FPL community to all be really, to really embrace new ideas. Mm. Because I think it seems kind of particular to the FPL community, and this links back to what we said, and I know you guys have experienced this at Juice as well, but it seems like when there's a new idea, the, 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 the default is scepticism and, and cynicism and, and that sort of thing. Where I've always been someone, I know you guys at Juice are as well, who thinks if, if we're going to try something, why not? Let's flip and do it, you know, mm -hmm. let's go for it. That's great. Yeah. So yeah, I think I'd, I'd 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 remove the cynicism from from people and, and embrace new ideas, and a lot of them will fail, but that's okay. Yeah, no, I've, I can definitely uh, get on board with that. Yeah, we'd be up for that as well. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Make yeah. life a lot lot more. Well, the fun. stuff you guys do is great. Like, I mean, even this podcast, you know, I full well know, and you know, you know, this will get reviewed by what a couple of hundred people. Yeah, like, it'd be small, numbers small, and... small numbers, but but you know, you're filling a niche that no one else is mm. it's brilliant new ideas try stuff do stuff and uh and there's real value you know not everything's defined by numbers yeah you know there's real value in doing stuff like this i think which is why i'm here and yeah. uh yeah you, you guys do a top job with everything you've got planned with all these game show sort of things as well like just great ideas that no one's done yeah. why not no it should be fun and like i say the, the reason we started this and mm. i mentioned it before we came on air is that my favourite conversations have always been the ones that are nothing to do with FPL. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't really care what Gakpo's XG is. <laughs> yeah. But I find it fascinating to yeah. see how the idea of Fest came about. Or mm. I find it fascinating to, you know, hear about how you're treated on X and yeah. whether it's kind of misconceptions and all that well, sort and just, of stuff. Well, just it's to say, well, the X thing, I don't want people to say, oh, he, th he thinks he's treated really badly. I'm not largely. No, people aren't very nice to me and... And uh, and I bring a lot of it on myself because I do it <laughs> deliberately annoy people like Aston Villa fans hate me at the moment because I keep saying I want them to fall apart. But uh, but it's all good fun. That's the thing. Like yeah. I always do it from a spirit of of good fun. Um, sometimes it pisses people off. You know, I, I'm I'm always surprised when I, when I you know when you find out someone's blocked you by. I've never clicked on a profile and gone oh he's blocked me. But you know when you see this post is you cannot see this person's yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I'm like oh. Oh, sorry, like, I don't know what I said, but I don't know what yeah, I did. 
but uh, I but think I'm blocked by someone. I've no it's, idea it's, why. It's a on X or Twitter. It's a mm. there's a lack of context, isn't it? Yeah. You can like, and I I think I remember seeing people getting on your back. You know when you wrote the capital you know like the capitals lowercase capital low as in like, <laughs> like yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. Of, do an impression of someone yeah. moaning about something yeah and it's like you could take that two ways mm. do you know what i mean you could take yeah. it like i've i believe that view and mm. someone's demeaning it and making it, it was because true. um the, 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 the feedback when we did fest was like why don't you just get a pub yeah or whatever which is right what which we is, do at meets and it's got great value and it's great fun, absolutely but it's not the same absolutely thing. brilliant but that's what not what we were trying to do. Yeah. So then, th- then we posted this video of the actual venue, which you know is pretty impressive, like venue, like the Waterloo Arches and the vibe and the stage and the TV, and it was all going to be exclusively us and everything. Mm. And, and I shouldn't have done it, but I was just like to those people, like, why don't you just book a pub? And then the video of Gianni showing us around this really quite impressive, yeah, cool yeah. venue that's gonna, that could fit like a thousand people in if you wanted. So yeah, I shouldn't have done it because it was <laughs> it was just I was a bit you know pissed off with basically what I, what I just mentioned the cynicism around a new idea yeah oh that's new like now no one complains about fest because it's not new yeah, it, it's, yeah, people yeah. know about it now yeah. you know and anyone who doesn't want to come doesn't doesn't come fine um but but yeah why do we just jump on things that are new um and, and try and sort of just yeah. criticize or pull it pull it apart i don't know it's funny isn't it because yeah like like with the five aside tournament we did mm. you know the the same i guess the the kind of parallel what's the word thing i got well the parallel kind of to that fest versus mm. going to a pub would be if we just said let's all meet up in a park and have a kick about yeah do you know what i mean sometimes and some people might do that and that's fine but that's yeah, not what you're trying to do exactly we yeah. just want to you know make things a bit more structured and organized, mm. make it more of a an event with mm. an actual agenda and a bit of a plan and some yeah. organization and it was great and... i went and we got through to the final by partly by cheating yeah. which was, <laughs> yes the multiple chip which was praz's fault 100 percent. but uh <laughs> but there you go well you got a chance to uh <laughs> go one better in a yeah in a couple of weeks we, time. our problem was uh we we only had five so we were all knackered like we had no yeah, subs yeah. The, whole, the whole time and all these other teams were like rotating all these subs in them um and then the team in the final were pretty good to be fair as well but uh but yeah no we'll we'll win this next one all right, you heard it here first. <laughs> but excellent, mate. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, one last thing. Mm. What's your prediction? Where is Kate Middleton? So <laughs> let's end with it. It's these people saying it's a conspiracy. Honestly, like <laughs> she's clearly had surgery. She's either, I don't know, put on a load of weight through something. That's one of the rumours. One of the rumours is she's like prop, like a bit iller than we thought. The palace came out and said, why am I involved in this? I don't know. The palace came <laughs> out the and said... You're the royal correspondent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got, the context is I did this tweet the other day that annoyed some of these people who think it's a conspiracy theory. But um, the palace have said, and they said from the very start, should we go back to duties in Easter? Mm. Uh, after Easter, whatever. And so she hasn't been seen. Fine. Leave the poor woman be. I suppose they did make an error releasing this photo that's clearly been edited. Yeah. And there might be like another face that's been used, whatever. All right. But I mean, what, what, what are you hoping is the case? That she's dead? Like, what are you wanting, you people? Just leave her alone. Clearly, there's something up. Just fine. Like, I don't know what these people want. What do yeah. they want? Well, she's still a mum. and still a wife. and still a someone's daughter. Exactly. It doesn't matter to anyone. The, the are, funniest thing is... The people that like, I hate the roles. I couldn't care less. Why do we even have them? We yeah. should abolish the monarchy. They're the ones that are most interested yeah. in what's going on. It's like, just, you want to uh, say, I thought you weren't interested. Yeah. I thought you didn't want Either way, it's either there's nothing going on and this is all just ridiculous. Mm. Or there's something going on, so leave them alone. Yeah. Like, if she, is, what are the options? She's iller than they've let on. Right, okay, well, let her flip and get better. Yeah. The, yeah, she's not exact. And the thing is, like, she's written a response. Maybe it's her, maybe it's not, whatever. But you know who you're, de- you're dealing with the royal family. Yeah. They're not going to jump on live to prove a point and no. say, hi, guys, just let you know I'm all all right. Yeah. It's not Cardi B. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? They don't, they're not, they're above all this media stuff. They yeah. don't do it. They yeah. never do it. And mm. they never have. They don't talk directly mm. through social media. It's just not yeah. something they do. So, Yeah. But interesting. We'll watch how that plays out. Where is she? She's basically, she's at home recovering. That's where she is. Yeah. 
She's chilling. She's chilling. She's watching the Apollo moon landings, isn't she? Hey, I love all that stuff. She's, <laughs> she's enjoying her time. That politics. I bet she's not paying 20, 28 quid a day for TV. Or whatever. Yeah. I love American politics. It's so interesting. I did. Uh, um, have you ever been to America? Mm. So I went to America last, uh, pretty much last Easter. Mm. Um, and I found it fast because I hadn't been in years. But I was in Florida mm. and it's like everyone in America, their personality is their party that they follow. Mm. Like there is no, and it's fully follow mm. or nothing. Mm. It's like, and, and then even the ones that start off, kind of like, I know, I know people, I've got friends in America, I know people that are like, hated Trump mm. but because they are Republican mm. they're now fully like in their head they've just been brainwashed now they like Trump mm. I'm like you said he was an idiot like mm. 10 years ago what are you talking about mm. and now it's like not 10 years ago 6 years ago it was. but then it's like I do not understand how their personalities are their political and there's no kind of like like in this country we discussed earlier we think they're both idiots right so mm. we might say I agree with high taxation of the super rich, mm. but I don't agree with them spending it on this or mm. whatever. And it might, mm. but there it seems like you fully, you have to fully go in. Yeah. And it's like, even when really complicated um, issues such as abortion or gun control and stuff like that, it's like, well, if that's your party, yeah, I, I agree with it then. And it's really it's it's it's, it's 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 They don't have a, uh, like a, a, a traditional class system that we have here. Mm. And I think that's kind of what replaces over there is like if your class over here is deemed to be so important and it kind of, for a lot of people, defines the way you are, think, act, whatever. And I think over there it is your party. Yeah, you're, you're a Democrat, you're a Republican. And a lot of, I know a lot of Republicans over there who who say, you know, I think Trump's an absolute awful person, but in terms of his policy decisions, they, they're, they're the ones I would back more. He's good for business or whatever. Or whatever yeah. the line is, you know, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but the, the, the big question in politics is always uh, personality or policies. Yeah. And most politicians, let's be honest, if we actually knew them, to get to where they are, are probably nasty people mm. or, or, you know, pretty yeah. ruthless people. And so forget the personality to a certain extent. I mean, certain things, obviously, someone's a murderer of the weekend. You're not going to, uh, you know, do that. But 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 look at the policies. And I think particularly in a world now where, you know, like you said, most people, I think, in this country at the moment think, I can't vote for any of these people. They're all morons. Um, and I think that's true in, in, in the States as well. I mean, it's absolutely mad that Joe Biden is the president of America. Like, whether he's lost his mind yeah. or not, it looks like he has. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the mumbling and all that. And he's the president of the free world. Now, Trump as well, it's mad that he'd be president. Like, yeah. how is this These the best the we've best got? Two. How have we got to 300 this million people. flipping point? Yeah. Um, it shows how it's all broken, really, isn't it? It's, it's, it's all broken. Yeah, it's it's really weird. And like, well, I mean, I remember being in bars, mm. like, just out in the evening and someone like hears your accent and they're like oh hey where are you from oh my and god like, are you british yeah and that, yeah. and there was one guy i was chatting to in this like tiki bar mm. and he had on a tat that said god guns trump right yeah, yeah. <laughs> republicans I'm, yeah yes yeah, so i'm like most like florida's like 99 percent where yeah. we were anyway seemed to be yeah 99 percent republican and i was chatting and he said what's your views on like guns and gun mm. control and stuff and i was like well i said look I personally don't think there should be any guns, but I don't live in this country, so I don't fully appreciate what it's like to be living here and how you must feel knowing that perhaps a lot of the wrong people have got guns and you might not have one. I can see why maybe you want to get one. I said, but ultimately there's a bigger thing at play like with the mental illness and what like the control of who's able to get them. So, and like the caliber of weapon that you're yeah make it and consistently make it like you could start to scale back over time like people don't mm. need the amount that they've got and all this mm. anyway and he was like yeah yeah it's interesting and he said and i said but i do i said why do you think like what's the answer to these school shootings then that you're getting and he was like give the kids guns basically yeah we need more guns we need more security mm. in school 
need to arm yeah. the teachers. Absolutely. Like Mos- and I was like, alien to us, isn't it? I yeah. Mean, and he was like, but genuinely, that was like, he didn't think that was mad that his solution would be more guns. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, there'll be things that we're blind to that other countries look at our country and go, it's mad that you think that. And and, and, and I think the blind yeah. spot for America has got to be guns. I mean, yeah. almost every metric you look at is just like, guns are a bad idea yeah mm. i mean they see it as like a sort of fundamental right don't they what is it the second amendment third amendment whatever it is yeah. the right to bear arms whichever one that is and, and yeah. because it's part of their constitution even though the constitution was written what 300 years ago or whatever they still think that's got to be le- binding now yeah because uh, it's, it's this is our country you're not going to take our guns you know king george and you british aren't going to take the guns away from yeah. us you know we've got to have guns in case the government rises up against us so like, flip government's going to rise up against you joe biden is he you know yeah. it's just and also, it's just do you not, if the government wanted to wipe you out, they're not coming with foot soldiers to your door. Mm. They, if you think they're as dangerous as they are, they're going to mm. they're gonna just send a drone over your house and wipe you out mm. in five seconds. You won't even see it coming. <laughs> yeah. They're going to poison your water. They could yeah. kill a whole, like they could do whatever they want. Yeah. So you and your rifle or your handguns, not mm. going to do any difference to that sort of stuff. So it all, yeah, it's Mad. just a, but again, I don't live in that country, so I don't fully appreciate what it would be, but. I was saying, what would you say to like live over? Like, if I was to move here, and he was like, "Oh, you'd have to put your kid in like private school. Your kid's in private school." I was like, "Like Ed," he said. <laughs> uh, yeah. He said, "You know, you'd have to put your kids in private school." And I was like, "He said just because of the security." I was like, but "It's just yeah." How like you say, there's many things yeah. that are like alien to to us, but just seem completely completely normal. But they've just got everyone arguing against mm. each other. And like even where people are from, like you'll sit there and they'll see someone will hear an accent. Like I've just been on holiday again, and where I was, there was a lot of Americans mm. there staying in the same place. And you'll be sitting with you might be sitting one at the bar, and they hear another accent, and they'll be like, "Oh, they sound like New Yorkers, typical New Yorkers." Da, da, da. Or like, "Oh, yeah, they're from California, probably like mm. this way or that way." Or mm, so. mm. And they're, they're so like ready to argue with each other. It feels like really divided. Whereas I do think we're divided in this country, but we're all kind of like united in where we, we all just want the country to be better. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Whereas I think as, as English or British people, we're kind of like fundamentally we want better NHS, better schools, Mm. better travel. Mm. Whereas in America, it's like they can't decide what they even want. Mm. Like one wants we want to ban abortions and the other mm. one will be like, we want the right to call trans women, women. Or that mm. seems like the most important things are like the, the mm. things that shouldn't the peripheral sort of. Stuff. Yeah. Just seems, just mm. seems real crazy, but it's an interesting place. It is indeed. I really want to travel across it when I'm older. Maybe when the kids are older, I've said do a little like road trip. Yeah. 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 Check it out. My brother did. I was very jealous. Got to experience it. Very cool. Um, but yeah, anyway, that, note, that was a double tangent, wasn't it? We went it off was. on one there. It was. <laughs> Happy with that. But all good, mate. Thank you again. And uh, yeah, just remind people where they can buy their tickets for Fest. www.ff-fest.com. It'd be great to see you there. Top man. Right, guys, we will see you next time. <laughs>